This tutorial is going to be a crochet ice cream cone in a waffle cone. Tell me about your favorite type of ice cream in the comments section below. And please rate the video. We will be using two colors of four ply worsted weight yarn. We will also be using some brown and black and a size H five millimeter crochet hook. I'm going to pull out a little bit extra yarn and this will be for the beginning, making sure it is closed nice and tight. If you're familiar with the magic circle, you can use the magic circle. I'm going to use a chain. I'm going to attach a slip knot to the crochet hook. Work a chain three. Put your hook through the first chain. Wrap the yarn over, pull through, pull through the loop on the hook. I'm going to crochet right over this beginning chain. I'm going to work five single crochet. We are working right through the center. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to let this come out to the front. We will be working in the continual round. This is where you put your hook right below the two loops at the top of the next stitch. I'm going to work the first single crochet. This is round two. We will work one single crochet in each stitch around. This is number two, three, four, five. That completes round two. We're moving on to round three. One, two, three, four, five. And this is what we have at this point, and it looks more like a little knob. It'll look better once we move along. Round four is going to have eight single crochet. We're working three increases and two individual stitches to get the eight. Keep in mind we are gradually increasing to get this nice point here for the waffle cone. The first two stitches will be an increase and we are working in the same stitch. This is number one and within the next stitch is the second increase and we're working in the same stitch. So that's stitch two. The next will be an individual for three. The next is an increase. We're working two in the same stitch. That's four, five, then an individual, which is six, an increase for seven, and eight. Now you can see we have a little bit of a flare right here and that's what we're looking for and it does look a little bit funny at this point. And you can take and pull that shut like that but we don't need to worry about that quite yet but it will become a point. Round five will be one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Round six will be an increase round. Work one single crochet in the next single crochet. Work two in the next stitch for the increase. That's three, we have three stitches, an individual for four, two in the next, this is five, six, an individual in the next, seven, an increase, eight, nine, an individual in the next stitch, ten, an increase, eleven, 12. 
and this is what we have at this point. Round seven and eight will be one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're moving on to round eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Round nine is going to be an increase round. At this point, if you want to keep track of your rounds, this is what I do. I just pull up this beginning tail through like that, and this is going to tell me where my first round is at. It doesn't have to be exact because if you have something that's looking like a cone going on here, that's going to work. This is a flexible project. We are working two single crochet in the first stitch. One in the third, we have three stitches. One in the next stitch, that's number four. The next will be an increase, five, six, two individual, seven, eight. An increase, nine, ten, individual, eleven, twelve. An increase, thirteen, fourteen, individual, 15, 16. Round 10 will be one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Round 11 will be an increase round. We will have a total of 20 stitches. We will have one increase, then there will be an individual stitch in each of the next three stitches. We will do this four times. The first two stitches will be an increase, and I will also show you that sometimes the increased stitches can leave a little hole. So if you don't like the little hole, stagger the stitches and work one of them through the back loop only. This will pull them up a little bit like that and stagger the stitches. It will be a little bit harder to see where your increased stitches are at if you do this. So you will need to count and have a good idea where your increases are at if you're doing it like that. Work one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Work an increase, which is two in the same stitch. One single crochet in each of the next three stitches. That gives us 10. Work an increase, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. An increase, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Rounds 12 and 13 will be one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 20. I am going to go ahead and finish rounds 12 and 13. When I come back, the stitches will be completed. This is what it looks like through round 13. Round 14 will be an increase round. The first stitches will be an increase stitch. 
we will work one single crochet in each of the next four. That's number two, three, four. These are individual. This gives us six, since right here is the increase. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. We will have a total of 24 stitches. The next will be an increase. This is seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. An increase, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. An increase, 19, 20, individual, 21, 22, 23, 24. Round 15 and 16 will be one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 24. And this is where we will stop increasing. I have finished round 16. Now I want to work a slip stitch in the next stitch and I'm putting my hook below the two loops, wrap the yarn over pull through, pull through the loop on the hook, wrap the yarn over one more time, and I'm going to pull through extra yarn. This is going to be for sewing my ice cream to the top of the cone. Now I don't need this anymore, and I'm going to pull it out like that. And this is what we have at this point. This is what it looks like on the inside. I am going to go on ahead and sew this end shut I'm going to make a knot just like that and make another knot. Now I'm going to leave this on the inside and I'm going to flip this inside out. I like how the inside looks better so I'm going to flip this one inside out just like that. This is the look that the inside gives me and I just like how that looks a lot better. So I will be using the inside as my right side for this project. And that is going to become a part of my stuffing on the inside. Just for some added embellishment, I took some scrap yarn here, and I'm going to cut it off like this. I am taking the strands apart in sets of two, just like that. I'm going to be randomly sewing the shapes onto the side of the cone. I'm going to start in here first. I want to make a knot. and I'm just going to leave a little bit of this tail hanging out like that and make a knot right here. And then come up here to the front and I am just randomly placing lines around my cone, just like that. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It was just a little embellishment that I liked. You don't have to add these if you don't want to. But I'm just placing them randomly in different places. And I'm going to go on ahead and finish this. This is what I have. I'm done sewing these little things on here and I'm going to finish up on the inside. And I'm going to just make a little knot here like this and make a second knot. And then I'm just going to leave it here on the inside. And this is what it looks like at this point. It is messy, and that is to be expected because there's nothing inside of it yet. I did use my felting tool 
on the outside to secure them and blend the fibers together a little bit. And that's what I'm going to do a little bit on this one, is just squash them together a little bit and blend. And it will stick on the inside and I have to pull it apart every once in a while. But that's all right. And if you don't have one of these tools, you can use the individual needle. They're sharp little needles and they have little razor edges. You probably won't be able to see them very well on camera. But there's little razor edges here along the needles. And then they pull up and kind of break the fibers and blend them together. I'm going to keep doing this so they're not as loose as what they are right now. And if you don't have one of these tools, you can sew shorter strands and that will keep them down closer. This segment is going to be the ice cream. We will start by attaching a slip knot to the crochet hook and I'm going to pull in a little extra just in case I need it. We will attach a slip knot to the crochet hook. Work a chain four. One, two, three, four. Join with the beginning chain. I'm going to work nine single crochet through the chain and I'm working right around the chain. That is stitch number two. Working right around the chain, that's number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is what we have. Now I'm going to take my loop like that and then just pull it shut. We will sew that in later and I'm going to wrap it out here to the front. We will work in the continual round. This is where I put my hook below the two loops at the top of the first stitch. This is the next stitch we are working in. We will be working two single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 18. And this way we don't have to join and we won't have that ugly seam. This is stitch two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Round three will be one single crochet in each stitch around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. This is what we have with three rounds. Round four is going to be an increase round. We will have 27 single crochet. The first two stitches will be an increase. That's two. The next stitch will be individual. Three, four, five, six. An increase, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. An increase, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, 
2021. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. We have completed round four. This is what round four looks like. Rounds five through 12 will be one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 27 single crochet. I have completed round 12 and this is what we have. Round 13 is going to be a decrease round. We will work one decrease and then one individual stitch. To work the decrease I am putting my hook below the front loop only. Typically we are working below two loops. I am working through the front loop only. Wrap the yarn over, pull through. Put your hook through the next stitch. Wrap the yarn over, pull through. We have three loops on the hook. Wrap the yarn over, pull through all three loops. The next will be individual. This will count as one stitch. The decrease is taking two stitches and reducing them down to one. So we have two completed. This is a decrease. That's three and then four. A decrease. five, six. Next is a decrease. Seven. eight, decrease, nine, individual 10. A decrease, this is number 11, and 12. A decrease, this is number 13, an individual which is 14. A decrease, 15, and the next is 16, a decrease, 17, and then 18 for our final stitch. And this is what we have, and we are going to stop here. I am going to work a slip stitch in the next stitch, and then cut off a little bit extra yarn just in case I need it. I am doing the same thing with this yarn as I did with the other color and I'm pulling it apart with strands of two. And you could also use embroidery floss if you happen to have some embroidery floss or some of the smaller thread or whatever you want to use. And then that way you won't have to pull them apart and it does tangle up some like that and that's to be expected. This one was a little bit longer which is why it's tangling up like this. I, I have better results if I cut them shorter. I'm wondering here if I'm going to make it. I might make it without getting a knot. We will see. And I did. I'm going to set this one aside. I have threaded my needle and I'm going to start in here towards the top. And I'm going to make a knot on the inside and pull it up just about there. I'm going to leave that hanging free. And I'm going to make a little knot. I 
and then I'm going to go up here to the top. And I should have sewn this in first. It's easier to do this if you have this sewn in. So what I'm going to do is set this aside for a minute and sew in this first tail and get it out of the way. And I'm just going to be putting everything to the inside. I'm going to put it on to the inside like this. Make sure that it's nice and snug. And then make a knot. And then make a second knot if you want to. And then I'm going to let it hang just like that on the inside. I'm not going to sew it in or anything. I have done two different techniques here. I'm doing a short little stitch and then just moving around in different places. And you can put as many of these or as few as you want to. And I'm just putting them in like this and not making them very long. They don't all have to be the same. They should be dispersed around in different places like that and in different going different directions but I'm not making them as long as I did on the ice cream cone on the waffle cone the other thing that I'm doing is a French knot and this is where you wrap the yarn around your hook two or three times or maybe if you want to do it a little more you can that's up to you then you put your hook in and then go up in a different place and then you try not to make a knot and I hold on to the knot right here like that wrap the yarn around your needle two or three times maybe four and then put it in a different place from where you came up and then you'll grab a hold of it you don't want the yarn knotting up on you then you make a little knot like that so you have a little strip here and then the French knot here and then you continue randomly making little sections which represent chocolate or whatever you want it to represent you could do this with a different color and make nuts or little cherries And then you'll continue putting on as many as you'd like to put on. Now I'm finishing this one up on the inside, making a knot. That wasn't supposed to come out, but it did. And I'm going to leave that on the inside just like that. And all these are going to be on the inside. I'm going to add a cherry to the top, work a chain four, join with the beginning chain wrap the yarn over pull through we will work 10 single crochet through the chain that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten we're going to pull that like that, work a continual round. We're working one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to be making a half cherry just like that and we're going to be attaching it to the top. Work a slip stitch to join. 
strap the yarn over and I'm going to pull through extra yarn and this is for sewing it to the top of the ice cream. Now before we go any further we want to sew in this tail. I'm going to make sure it's tight and then I'm going to make a knot. Make a second knot. I like how the inside looks better, so I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to pull this to the inside like that. I have threaded this strand of yarn and I'm going to lightly pull it slightly tight around here. I don't want to pull it too snug. Oh, I'm getting these little extra tails here. Just pulling it ever so slightly. Just like that. And now I'm going to attach it right here to the top, just like that. And I'm just going to start stitching it around. And then coming up, I'm putting my needle right here and then coming up through the red part just like that. It may be a little bit lopsided and that's okay because ice cream cones tend to be lopsided. So this does not have to be exact. And I think I'm just about done here. I'm going to make a little knot right about here and I'm going to run it the inside just like that and I'm going to cut off some of this and just leave it on the inside. This is what it looks like with a cherry. So that's an additional option if you'd like to add a cherry. I don't have any stuffing so I'm going to be using some old yarn and I have some yarn here that looks like it might be from a hundred years ago. I've never seen this before but I'm going to be using this. Let's look here at the label. It says it's from Ben Franklin and it costs $3.59. So I'm going to be using this as stuffing to the inside. And I'm just going to pull it out like that and just create a big yarn mess. And I'm going to stuff the inside of my cone using this old yarn. So if you don't have stuffing, sometimes I use fiber fill. You can use your scrap pieces of yarn or an old cotton t-shirt or old cloths. You know, whatever you have around, recycle what you have. And if it's something that you washed, say you want to wash your ice cream cone, it gets dirty, your kids play with it and it gets they drop it in the mud you may want to wash it. So the yarn is going to be washable. I'm filling the inside of mine with this until it's full. Now I'm doing the same thing with this one and I'm putting a little bit down here at the point and I'm going to use my scissors to push it down here and try to make it nice and pointy. The top part is stuffed as full is it's going to be stuffed. So I'm going to wind this around and pull the edges just slightly. I'm not going to pull it completely shut. I'm just going to slightly pull it like this. I'd like the top to keep its shape, but I don't want to pull it all the way shut. 
I'm going to make a knot right here. And I'm going to sew over just like this. I'm going to make another knot. And this is going to be on the inside, so you won't be able to see this part. And then I'm going to run this to the inside. I'm going to go up here and pull it back in, just like that. And then this is going to sit on here like this. I'm threading my needle. And I ended up with a little mess here, but hopefully I will be able to straighten that out. I could have used a slightly larger needle, but I didn't. Okay, I'm going to take and push this back down. I'm going to set this on top just like that. And this is my beginning right here. I'm going to sew right from here, just like this, catching the cone and the ice cream. At the same time, I want to make sure this is stuffed down to the inside and not coming out. going over loops, catching the ice cream, and then coming back through the cone, just like that. Going over a loop, catching the ice cream, and coming back through. And if you find that you end up with gaps that are too big, you can always go back around again and sew it more secure. And it's okay if it's lopsided, because ice cream cones are lopsided and they are not perfect in shape. So the more lopsided it is, the better. And then you'll just continue sewing it around until you get back around to the beginning. Now you can see this one looks slightly different from this one, and that is good because all ice cream cones are different. So they don't all have to look like little clones of each other. Different is good. Now when I get this completed, I'm going to make a knot right here. And then I'm going to make another little knot. And then I'm going to run this to the inside and hope I don't lose my needle here. Just like that. And then cut off the yarn. And that completes the ice cream cone.